Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, in this video today, I'm going to start <coughs> with the successful results of Russia's agriculture and food products embargo on the EU and the West uh, in particular and their response. And now they've got upset and now accuse Russia of using food supplies as weapons and undermining the global economies. Yes, that's the EU and the US who've imported 14 her rounds of sanctions on Russia and have cut it out of international payment organisations like SWIFT and now accuse it of acting unfairly. I mean, they've blocked the supply of Russia's uh, free fertiliser supplies to two African countries by confiscating them in Baltic ports. Now they complain about what Russia's up to. Now that obviously means that Russia's outmaneuvered them and their cartels and their global supply uh, of the food sector and they're not happy about it. Obviously, the media lapdogs like the FT and The Economist have published hit stories about evil Russians having nefarious intent by supplying free grain and fertilizer to the third world. Now this week, the Russian Minister of Agriculture, Oksana Lok, presented the results of the decade-long food embargo that it imposed on the West, which was initiated by a presidential degree and prohibits the import of agriculture cultural products and food uh, to Russia from countries that introduced or supported anti-Russian sanctions in connection with the return of the Crimea back to its motherland. Now, Lutz stated that in the 10 years of the food embargo, Russia has transformed itself into one of the most competitive, flexible and technologically advanced agricultural sectors in the world. Now, the phrase is deceptively simple, yet it encapsulates a significant and complex set of developments. I mean, over the past decade, Russia has made a remarkable achievement in its agricultural sector. I mean, it reduced its alliance on, reliance on imports and became a net exporter of food. The last few years, the country has been exporting much more food than it actually imports, and that's a notable shift in the global food market. Now, this transformation um, has disrupted the monopoly held by the Western countries on the food sector. I mean, this is an example of the Kremlin's uh, propaganda from 2014 to 2023. There was a 32% uh, growth in agricultural production in Russia, with the food sector experiencing a 42.9% increase. In the past 10 years, Russia's agricultural exports have grown by 2.6 times. They reached $43.5 billion by the end of 2023, compared with just $17 billion in 2013. Now, during their food embargo, the harvests of grains increased by twofold, oil seeds by 2.3 times, potatoes by 1.6, and vegetables by 1.7. Livestock and poultry production increased by 35%, and it placed Russia fourth in the world in meat production. And it's worth noting that the new market positions were created by the embargo on Western imports, which were rapidly filled by domestic companies, with consumers experiencing a minimal disruption in availability and supply. However, uh, the West uh, competitors were quick to feel the impact of these changes. She says, Oksana Lut, the Minister of Agriculture, says Russia's taken a strategic course on strengthening Russia's position as a guarantor of global food security. And this has caused significant challenges for the West, which is unable to respond effectively as Russia consolidates its role in the global food market. I mean, Russia's moves have the potential to shift the balance of power in world politics and in economics, particularly in the world of food. Russia is one of the world's leading exporters of food, with supplying over 160 countries with a wide variety of products from wheat, barley, oilseed, flax and fish. And it's also a strong presence in sunflower, meat, poetry and other agricultural products. Now, these exports not only strengthen international ties and, but, and influence, but they also contribute to the rather healthy Russian budget. Plus, they challenge the Russophobic narrative of the West in places like Africa and Asia, where Russia is seen as a friend and a reliable supplier of food products. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. <clears throat> if you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website seobricksetsite.com 
uh, so I can further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, so thank you now. Now, uh, since the start of the special military operation in the Ukraine, the European Union has imposed 14 rounds of sanctions packages against Russia. Now, we all know the primary objective of these sanctions to weaken Russia's economic base, deny access to critical technology and markets, and accordingly, significantly it reduce its ability to function as a country and defend itself. Now, in my opinion, it appears that these sanctions were thought up by economically illiterate idiots who have no idea how the world of trade works and actually believe their own bullshit. I mean, Russia was able to navigate the sanctions without significant difficulty. Yeah, there were a few minor problems, but, you know, they were overcome. And rather than retreating from the global f food market, it began to expand its presence in a dynamic manner. Now, this obviously angered the countries of the G7 and the EU was first to raise its voice. At the World Economic Forum in Davos, the head of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, or Barons von Munchausen, as I tend to call her, highlighted the issue in a speech, noting that Russia is using food resources as a weapon that affects the global economy. I mean, she fails to mention that the EU is still dependent on Russia for 40% of its fertilizer supplies, which if Russia cut them off, the effects on EU agricultural production would be catastrophic. The, e the US also spends around 3 billion per year on Russian fertilizers, and they don't tell you that in the press now, do they? However, the Empress of the EU again has failed to acknowledge it's the collective West, and particularly the United States, that typically and globally utilizes food blackmail to reinforce its dominance. I mean, the EU's common agricultural policy is the most protectionist system in the world for protecting farmers from global competition. But let's be honest, we should not be surprised as the West is well known for its hypocrisy and hubris. In particular, the US has frequently employed the use of food as a strategic tool controlling food exports with the objective of achieving its political goals. Now, this goes back a long time. For example, Earl Boots, who was the head of the US Department of Agriculture in the Nixon and Ford administrations back in the 70s, openly stated that for the US, food supplies to other nations are a weapon we can use. Now, one strategy was to flood the market of a particular country with inexpensive American products subsidized by the US budget which undermined the local agricultural sector in many third world countries and tied the country to food supplies from America. It should also be noted that the government of the country they began to exhibit fight signs of fighting back. The food valve was switched off, which was always a solution to uh, undermine the government and bring about regime change. Just look at the <laughs> Arab Spring. Now, to ensure the success of this venture, it was necessary to eliminate potential competitors in the food market. This resulted in the removal or acquisition of numerous entities, leading to the emergence of not only food monopolies, but super monopolies on a global scale. I mean, for those interested in the details of the agricultural machine machinery market, the seed market, agrochemicals, and the grain trade, the <coughs> latest data is worth noting. It shows that four companies control 44% of the global agricultural machinery market, two companies control 40% of the global seed market, four companies control 62% of the global agrochemicals market, and four companies control 80% of the global grain charts uh, trade. <clears throat> now, the majority of those companies are based in the USA. Russia, which initially established a fully independent domestic agricultural market and subsequently entered the global market, has effectively positioned itself to compete with these Western monopolies. Now, this turn of events was so unexpected and damaging to their interests that their former leaders, who previously enjoyed the monopoly, reacted with genuine distress. You know, this reached a point where there was a strong push at the highest levels to adopt a charter at international level involving the EU that would prohibit the militarization of the food market. There's also a drive to resist the deliberate disruption of supply chains and the manipulation of critical types of food supplies as a method of making war. 
So, as you can see, the US is tail is being stamped on hard, and as usual when its plans are being thwarted, it screams spill. Now, as you know from some of my other videos, Russia has already responded to all the sanctions and prohibitions, and telling Russia uh, who and whom and where it can choose to sell or even give away its foodstuffs is just not going to work. I mean, in light of the looming food crisis, which Western an analysts have already labelled an agri-crisis, things might become even more constrained. I mean, the world's leading insurance company, Lloyd's, has identified a potential giant food shock in the coming in the next decade. I mean, the data indicates that despite a projected increase in agricultural production, accelerating so-called climate change has also already reduced global ag agricultural productivity by about 30 percent. Although the EU's uh, crazy policies uh, on agriculture in places like Holland and France are obviously having an effect on it. I mean, this signals that the Russian agricultural sector will continue to expand its reach. And as the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, said, Russia's friendships do not end at our borders and our allies and friends are everywhere across the world. And we will continue to work with them for our mutual benefit. So again, the BRICS appears to be the dominant force against the wishes of the US and its vassals. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please also share. Uh, also, the comment section I do work with and I do read and I do uh, respond as much as I can. Now, if you're feeling generous, you can help me fund the channel by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Thank you and I'll see you all again soon.